question is for Abhay. I've seen those few films of yours where you managed to get into the skin of the character. Now, I'm just trying to understand how you go about doing that so convincingly and respect to you for that. So say, for example, Dave D. Did you actually show up on the sets inaugurated? <laughs> well, there was, a, there was one day that I did have a drink while I was shooting and Anurag was like, yes, I want you to drink. By the end of these two months, I want your liver destroyed. You know, I want you to go for it, feel it, be it. And as soon as he said, I want your liver destroyed, my brain just said, oh, oh, that's right. I mean, you know, it's very hard. You shoot 8 to 10 to 12 to 16 hours a day. It could be anything. And it gets hard. If you start drinking, you'll just be passed out after three hours, you know, especially with the lights and the whatnot. So no, I think I drank maybe two or three times during the making of that movie, just to get a feel of it. And then I just took it from there and, and then sort of played it up. I mean, after all, it's acting. You have to act. So, yeah. Does Kangana also like to get drunk to get a feel of uh, doing those scenes? Uh, well, I was also suggested the same thing, uh, but uh, I didn't have to. I had quite a lot of experience with that. <laughs> 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 okay, that lady over there. Yes, please, ma'am. Hi, my question is to you, Abhay. In Zindagi Milegi Na Dobara, you have proved that you are not only a star or an actor, but you are a singer also. So, can you please hum two lines for us? Uh, it's like I'm promoting my movie again. <laughs> um, you want to join me? I'm not a singer. <laughs> That's two lines. <laughs> it's, all, it's all technical. You see, they've changed and tweaked the voice. That's what you're listening to on the player. Okay, the gentleman over there. You want to ask a question? No one wants to actually ask about stardom and acting. Are they related? Looks like. What's that? No one really cares. <laughs> no, of course they do. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> uh oh, I provoked you. Okay, talking about stardom. I've noticed a kind of an artificial wall between the television and the main screen. I don't know why that happens. And therefore, my question would be that if both of you were offered roles, nowadays there are so many serials which are there, <clears throat> would you take a role in the serial on t television at the same time continue with roles in the main films? Would you do that? Uh well, in India, we, we have TV and films as two different industries, you know. And uh, uh, I, I personally feel why we cannot really, like Hollywood and like other countries, why, why we can't really shuffle between two, because the, the soaps here are very, very demanding, like soap operas, you know, so very demanding. So uh, people continue shooting for 365 days, a year, and they're really committed to those. So I'm not sure if you can do movies, but in movies we have assignments. Once one project is over, you know, in, in three, four months, we can have our own break. And so I think that that's the main reason why film actors can't work in TV. But there are other uh, shows, like reality shows, which are not so demanding, you know, like uh, other actors been doing, a lot of them. So that way, I think it's somewhere there's a connect. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take the name of a person. You and you're going to tell that? us whether he's an actor or a star. You want me to answer this question? Yes, please. <laughs> no, honestly, the television here in this country is really bad. Uh, I, yeah, it's... And I keep asking people who I know, you know, why are, are soaps, you know, because you'll have that ta-dang, ta-dang, ta-dang. You'll have, you know, if someone gets a shocking news and for five minutes they just have different cutaways of different reactions and music. And nothing ever moves really very fast, you know. 
So I asked my friends who do TV, I'm like, why is it like that? They're like, you know, we, we're catering to the housewife who's cooking and cleaning and she couldn't be bothered with really listening to all the dialogues. So we have to really drive the point home. <laughs> yeah, and that, there's no scope for acting really, you know, and you, it's just you do it for your bread and butter really. And besides, besides not being very attracted to the content on television, um, anywhere in the world, it's very difficult to keep a career in both fields. Very rarely do people ever jump from one to the other because they're two different mediums. I personally believe it's being on a television, people then start to identify with you to a particular character, so then whenever you do a film, it's very hard to shake that character that you know of the person on TV. I think a lot of that has to do with that. Yes. Okay, so we'll take the name of a person and you tell us whether he's a star or an actor. Okay, let's start with Shahrukh Khan and Abhay. Okay, is Shahrukh Khan, according to you, an actor or a star? Shahrukh is an actor or a star. You're going to get us into trouble, aren't you? <laughs> he's clearly a star. I mean, don't you all agree? Isn't Shahrukh a star? People love Shahrukh. He's a star. He's one of the biggest stars we have. Okay. Star. Nasiruddin Shah? I knew you'd say actor. I'll say star again. Why not? He's a star for me. <laughs> Salman Khan. Go on, you're supposed Star. to be forthright. Star. Star. Sunny Deol? Yeah, he's also a star. Everyone's a star. So you think none of them have any acting capability? So you don't think much? Of I'm no one to judge. I'm just an actor. We're I'm asking a critic. you what you think. Um, I guess, for, I think, uh, I suppose you would say Shahrukh is a star and Asir is an actor. I mean, I mean even, even the audience would agree with that. And Dharmendra? She's asking for trouble, aren't you? No, I'm asking you for the truth. I, I think, okay, let me take, I think Mataiji is a classic example. I truly believe when I look at his work in the early years with Bandini, Satyakam, and whatnot, I think that's what we would say he was an actor. And then I think once his He-Man image took over, he became a star. So are you concerned that the same might happen to you? Are you concerned the same might happen? I, I don't have that kind of physique, yeah. You need six packs to be a star nowadays. You wouldn't have any wall over there. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to Kangana. Priyanka Chopra. Uh, Miss World, an actor, a star? Is she an actor or is she a star? <laughs> She's a star. Katrina Kaif? Star. <laughs> okay, who do you think is an actor then? <laughs> well, there are actors as well, but in Bollywood, we have this funny concept of stars and actors, so sometimes your stardom really overpowers everything, all your other abilities, sometimes your beauty as well, and it just becomes all about that, which is very unfortunate, and, uh, but that's the way it is. That doesn't mean Priyanka can't act or Katrina doesn't have talent, it just simply means that their, their <laughs> stardom has they taken over. They just want to put us into trouble, they just want to know, star or actor, <laughs> so then they can so later say they stars. can't. Vidya <laughs> Balan? Star and an actor as well. Ra Rani, you have to pick one of the two. But you know, it's a fact that she has managed to give one of the biggest hit this year. So that makes her a very, very popular actor, which is equal to a star. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of it, if it has to be worthwhile, you have to be a star. Who? I'm saying at the end of it, from your prism, if it has to be worthwhile, it has to be a star. Yes. <laughs> Abhay is sitting there. You wish to disagree or you agree with that? I didn't understand what you just so, said. Question, what was your question? He's, she's saying that if it has to be worthwhile in the end, you uh, have to necessarily be a star. Is that the way you, 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 you wear it as well? You uh, if if you had to choose between one, it's better to be a star than an actor? Um, well, the truth of the matter is, you can be an actor, but no one would know who you are. Whereas if you're a star, everybody would, and you get the next project and you get to work. So unfortunately, it's all about making the money. It's all about getting the right project and the platform. And there's no point in being very artistic because you could just be cutting your ears off in some field somewhere, you know, and nobody knows. So unfortunately, yeah, in today's world, it's better to be a star than an actor. Maybe you can at least work on your acting once you're a star. Kangana, can a, <laughs> Kangana, can a heroine uh, be to a film what a hero is? We're seeing Vidya Balan uh, do that quite successfully recently. 
Would you like, do you think you can do it? Would you like to do it as well? Or are you happy to play second fiddle to a star? Uh, uh, I would love to do something like that. In fact, I was offered Dirty Picture, but I didn't have vision to, to think that, you know, it, it's going to be something so great. So I regret it today. And uh, I, I, I think what Vidya has done is great. She's a very, very talented and courageous woman. So why and did you say no to the dirty picture? I said I didn't have vision to, to think that it's, it's going to be such an amazing film. Uh, but I'm sure I will be given more opportunities. And this time around, I will have the vision as well. <laughs> well, you're courageous enough to admit it. Oh, yes, please. So Kangna, we had Karina here yesterday who was talking about Dirty Picture and Vidya's role. Um, and she said, she was asked whether she would have done the orgasm scene that Vidya did so well. I'd like to ask you the same question. Would you have done the orgasm scene? Well, I would answer it differently uh, because I was offered the film. And like I said, I, I didn't have vision. So it means I didn't really think I could have done it. So that's why I didn't do it. Yes, so were you, if you were offered it today, do you think that you would have done it? No. No? No. Okay. Hi, I, my name is Bobby Seigel. My question is, uh, are you a superstar if your last three films have done brilliantly well and your next three films do really badly, are you a flop actor? <laughs> That kind of balances it out, doesn't it? Three hits, three flops. So you're neither here nor there. Basically, your score is zero. <laughs> it, uh, it's a very insecure industry, to answer your question. Um, a lot of it does depend on your last film, but it's not like one flop is going to destroy you. But to have three in a row would, yeah, you might see less people hanging around you. <laughs> Denzel? Okay, Abhay, my question is to you. Uh, I'm here, friend, friend. Um, you're not mainstream, okay? And because of that, at least you're not perceived as being mainstream. And because of that, is there an insecurity within you? Because you not only act, you also do sculpting. You go out and take your eight months off and then come back to do a little bit of acting. So does the star diminish and does that make you insecure? Um, I do have insecurities, but um, the thing is I'm, I'm not a very competitive person. I've always believed that, you know, there's always going to be space for everyone. And what I can do, another person cannot. And what another person can do, I cannot. I think that gave me the security to be able to, I, that's why I take my time off. I'll take a year, I'll do something, I'll go somewhere, I'll learn another craft. Um, I also, I've had the opportunity to go mainstream many a time. And I've deliberately chosen not to because I really want to build a body of work. Um, I really wanted to appeal to an intelligent audience the belief in the industry was that, you know, there is no such thing as an intelligence audience, you know. They just want entertainment, escapist fare, and that's all. And I was like, no, let me appeal. So if I was really insecure, I would go and just play to the lowest common denominator, you know, build my body, dance like a dream. And I haven't done that, so. But I, yeah, I think my security is going down a bit. You might just see me doing that soon. <laughs> it's, you won't get to survive otherwise. So how intelligent do you think the audience is? I've always said that if there has to be some intelligence out there, and I'm going to appeal to that. Um, Have you found it? Are you still searching? <laughs> well, I'm here today. You've called me to the conclave, haven't you? So I guess there is. <laughs> All right. Since we have um, two panelists here and we have two young panelists in the audience, could we get them back on stage and we're going to change the format a little bit and mix it a bit? So can we have Deep and sit back on stage, please? So let's take some of the questions that we've got uh, on the website. There's this person from Orcha, Abdul Jafri. And he's asking about the insecurities of being a superstar and how different are stars in their real life as compared to real life. Kangana. Well, insecurities of being a star are very, very obvious because you don't know why, why are you loved, you know. It's just that you know that there are better looking people, more talented, better human beings, and they're not stars. 
And if you are a star, you will never know why are you loved. And one, if one fine day you wake up and you're not loved anymore, you wouldn't know what has changed. And that has happened in the past to most of the stars. Just one day stardom just decides to leave you. So, uh, so well, I think everybody must be feeling that way when they are experiencing something without knowing why they are experiencing it. Uh, and uh, so these are the insecurities I think every star must be going through. Uh, this is a question that goes to all four of you. I think it mixes both the topics that we are talking about, having a godfather or not. In business, in movies, they all say that if there is no one in the world, you can't make it. So can we have it very short from all four of you? How important is it to really have a godfather, somebody watching over you or inheriting? All four of you. Sit. Well, of course, I can speak from my experience. It gives you the platform, but also having that someone watching over you is, is great, but it also puts the pressure on you to succeed that much higher as well. And you always want to, you know, outdo that person who's watching over you and sort of prove a point. Uh, well, I, I personally, I don't have any reason to say that you need a godfather in, you know, to make it in, in any career, because I personally feel that that uh, you are responsible for your own destiny and you can make it and... Would you have been a superstar today had you a godfather? Would you have been a superstar today? Uh, well, uh, I might not be a superstar today, but I can assure you I would be one someday without a godfather. And I'm sure if I've come here so far without anybody, I can, I can you know, be a superstar as well if that's what I want and without a superstar boyfriend as well. Sorry? And without a superstar boyfriend as well. Yes. Um, a godfather can give you a platform, really, but it's, it's your own talent that makes you a star or not, you know? A lot of people have, been, have had godfathers and they've been giving chances, but they still don't get anywhere. And there are others who don't have a godfather and still get somewhere. And there are those who've had godfathers and have become stars and gone beyond their godfathers, you know? So. It really depends on yourself as an individual. Um, I'm a creature of analytics, so for me, it's simply the odds. Uh, the odds are obviously tougher, we all know, but we've got one great example out here with Kangana, with no connections. I think Abe is also very modest in what he says. He's, I don't think he's really used any of those connections. I've seen him before, and he's actually multi-talented. Last year at the Conclave, I think as your opening act, you had uh, Shah Rukh Khan, no godfather, uh, you know, so I think uh, if you have it in you, you're going to do it. Uh, I'm, I don't believe in destiny. I think you have to make it. And I think Angna said that too. But it's going to be tougher. But again, linking back to what I said earlier, it's going to be even more satisfying when Kangana is the superstar. For Vidya, and we heard her recently at, uh, I can't even mention the place. I'm, I'm at India today. But we heard her recently somewhere. Uh, and, and, you know, you could tell the satisfaction she felt uh, in that interaction of, uh, you know, doing something pretty much uh, from, you know, her background's very different. I mean, she could have done many things, and that's the question I asked her, why did you choose films? And, uh, you know, it was just a burning desire. So I think it's tougher, but the fruit is sweeter. So. You know, we've, um, this is Denzel again, and uh, my question is to all four of you, and this takes from where Deep um, actually um, left off, and that's, uh, oi, lucky, lucky, oi. Um, it's always said that there is an equal balance between the amount of luck that you have, the amount of perseverance that you have, and the fact that one day you're going to make it somewhere. All of us have perseverance, at least a large number of us, but a lot of us don't make it. Circumstance, you're saying, does not play a role. Is that true? Uh, it's a great point, Denzel. So I'm a firm believer that uh, luck favors the brave, not for any other reason, not because it's a, it's a well-known adage or a proverb. It's because the brave, or in your words, the persevering, try much harder, they knock on many, many more doors, and your probability, and therefore analytics, your probability of some doors opening up are just higher. So keep working harder and some door will open up. It's as simple as that. Yeah. The gentleman over there. Uh, I know, you know what, I'm not a believer in luck, and actually this, Luck favors the brave, I think this destroys luck itself because if you're brave, you'll get lucky. But then if you're brave, that's probably what's getting you there, right? So I don't believe in luck, no. 
All right, this question's for Kangana there. Kangana, you've been appreciated as an actor, but do you think you worked double as hard to keep up with the star image in terms of working on your diction, putting your look together, and would you or uh, have you gone under the knife to keep up with the star image? Uh, well, the thing is this, that uh, when you are criticized, like I said, I was 17 when I started. I could hardly finish my school before I got here. And uh, when you're criticized, there are two ways you can look at it. Either you can say that, okay, everybody is wrong and, and I don't care, or you can improve. You know? So that's what I did. When I came here, I didn't know English. I still don't much of it, but, uh, but I, I tried to, uh, try to learn about styling or about acting or diction. I'm still, I'm still working on it. I'm still working on my, uh, my skill. I'm, I, I'm learning dancing, I'm learning singing. So that's a spirit one should have. One should not feel bad if, if the criticism is coming from the right place. And you should have that instinct to know if criticism is coming from the right place because most of the people just would want you to feel like shit for just because you are, you know, just because you are who you are. But then there are people who are very, very genuine, and if they criticize you, you, you must take it in the right spirit. Well, you're a brave woman, Kangana. That gentleman over there? Yes, please. My name is uh, Bjorn from Denmark again. Abha, even I have seen your Sindagi uh, movie. I liked it, thank you. And it's a... Uh, it's a nice session. I must say, I don't believe in the premise that uh, being a star and being a good actor are exclusive attributes. And I must also say that uh, I, I don't agree with the style of asking all the female actresses if they would do an orgasm scene, but not asking any of the men. But my question is not going to be that. I would like to ask all four of you, uh, now not all of you are actors, but within your chosen field, and apart from what you have already said, you are advised to somebody who already believes that they are good at what they do, but have not achieved stardom yet. And they would like that uh, stardom to be long lasting and not just one or two days or one or two movies. What is your advice to them? Over to any one of you who want to answer that one, please. Uh, I think that's the oldest first this time. Okay. Um, I tell young entrepreneurs the, the little bit that I've learned that uh, when you're getting into this new business, whether it's the internet or any new business, uh, do try to get in for the right reasons. Don't focus too much on the ephemeral pot of gold. It may or may not come. Uh, get in for the long haul. In India, typically businesses take much longer to build than they do in Silicon Valley or other parts of the world, probably double the time, maybe even triple the time. So it links to actually uh, what, what Sid had said, you really, really must enjoy what you're doing. You've got to try to find your mojo very quickly, what makes you quick, tick very quickly in life, and then after that, it's a dream. Because then those hours don't matter, those nights don't matter, and the, the long haul doesn't matter, the marathon race doesn't matter. And if you focus too much on exits and stuff like that, which has become pretty popular in the dot-com world, uh, you know, it'll probably never come. So focus on building a credible business, focus on solving real customer problems, and I think the rest can fall into place. Uh, also focus on building a really good team. I think too many good entrepreneurs make a mistake of doing everything themselves. Uh, I can say hand on heart that we wouldn't be where we are today without the kind of guys I've got around me. You know, they're just an A-grade team. And it's because of that I can, you know, be here wasting my, I mean, spending, having a great time. <laughs> while, <laughs> while uh, that's Freudian, sorry. Uh, but, uh, but while folks are, you know, hard at work, even on a Saturday, so, uh, you know, it's, uh, I think you have to build a good team, very different from the profession that we have uh, right here, where it's really the individual. So that's, that's it for me. So your question was, uh, if you love what you do uh, and you're doing well, how do I translate that to stardom? Is, is that what you're asking? Like, how do you... Well, um, I think the essential thing is that you love what you do. Um, I've noticed with me, every time I've chased something, it's always eluded me. So as soon as I've said, right, okay, I'm not going to chase anymore. I'm just going to get absorbed into my work and do it because I love it. And then everything just started to fall into place by itself. I think that's the best thing to do is like, you're, you should just be thankful that you're doing what you love and that should be the reward in itself and everything else will come. Siddhartha Malia, Kangana Ranaut, Abhay Deol, Deep Kalra. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us at the India Today Conclave. Thank you.